In this video, I'm going to share with you what you need to do when you're going to do a refurb of a property. So how you put the list together to send over to the build, builder or your handyman. So this is a light refurb I'm doing on this property I own. I'm going to put a list together. I'm going to use this list here. So in the comments, if you put together a list, I'll share this list. But what you want is something super simple that you can just tick off as you go along. So what I'm going to do is let you sit on my shoulder and watch what I do to tick this off to send this over to my builder. But before I get into that, make sure you hit that like button. It really does help the channel. But when you turn up to a property the first thing you want to do is you want to have a look at the roof and the line of the roof you can see there the ridges on this particular roof has got a few bits it doesn't look like it needs immediate attention but could in the future i want to look at the chimney look at the pointing on the chimney and i want to look at the guttering you can see the guttering is fairly newish and the soffits and fascias then i'm looking directly down the building i'm looking for any signs or cracks or any signs of the pointing and mortar out of the brickwork need doing or any damage around the brickwork i'm looking at the boundary to see what sort of work is going to be involved with that the fence and stuff like that. So at the moment, windows are fine. The roof probably in, in the future need attention, but not straight away. Chimney looks fine. No major cracks, no point in or no problem with that. So now let's go a bit further forward. Front door also looks fine. So what I've got on this list, I've just got the front of it and you want a quick list and a more in depth one. But when you're doing a viewing, you want the quick one. And then when you've got the property, and you've got the keys, you want to go in a bit more depth and detail. But what I'm doing here is just ticking off. So just work need doing is there clearance. I'm just going along this list here and I'm ticking off the things that need doing on the list as I go along, like you've got roof, guttering, rendering, brickwork, and so forth. One of the things you do want to look out for massively is along the boundary. You want to look for signs of where water can be collecting because ultimately this is what causes a lot of damp, not so much rising damp. If there's water sitting somewhere, sometimes it can be a case of like, you might want to throw a bucket of water down or a hose down to see if water sits. But if there's any obvious point where you can see puddles are being or water can sit or there's weeds growing around like a dam pipe, which is none at the front here that's signs about damp this property here has got a damp proof call so that really helps you can see that line along there is a damp proof course that they built on these sort of style properties these ex-local authority properties are absolutely brilliant less problems with damp and problems with that but often you can put a soak away in if you look down there, there's a soak away drain along here if you put one of these along the perimeters of a building this can often sort out damp a lot cheaper and a lot quicker than getting a damp specialist out but anyway as we walk in the list here is a list where it'll go straight from hallway and entrance so again you just tick off does anything need stripping so this has got wallpaper on but it's been painted over so i'm going to do nothing with that wallpaper and then i'm going to walk through the, the property sort of like in a logical order so i'm going to walk into the living room again doesn't need stripping or wallpaper in or anything like that this is a neutral color and these are neutral colors so i'll keep these flooring's fine so i'm just be ticking these off to build out a list for myself similar again as i come into the kitchen i will go through again i'd look at the cupboards slightly dated these sort of cupboards but in this case i'm not going to change these this is my property so i'm not going to change these i'm just going to leave these in for the time being to get a rental in to get this to market quicker but these will need probably changing in the next sort of like two to five years again you go to the back of the building again out here at the back what you want to be doing again is looking along this parameter line to see for any signs of water again here these are points so sometimes these drains are full up again here we can see this plant growing here that's not going to cause a problem but these are the things you want to look at along the parameter of them again then you want to go back out here and look along the roof line exactly the same as what you did from the front on this one particularly there's pipe work here you can see on this pipe work there is a little gap in there but a lot of that's probably to do with the way they've brought them pipes out not to do with any problems with the building so there's light bits with the mortar there again if you get damp in that bathroom it's probably going to be because that needs filling out this is a real big tip if this is a victorian building make sure you don't fill up your mortar and the mortar lines are these in between the bricks make sure you don't fill it up with sand and cement because they're lime mortar that's what caused breathing problems this is the next local authority these are brilliant these are my favorite style properties because they're more structured they've got cavity walls you can see in here as well there should be signs i know this one's been done there's signs along here when you see the drill holes along these often there's drill holes along here these are because these cavity walls have been filled up as well they're signs that you know the cavity in between has been filled up so the insulation and the epc level is going to be high if you haven't got the epc already so the next thing i usually are looking out for is electric with this electrics when i'm coming around you look for signs of how many sockets that are there in there lots of socket is a good sign that it is pretty up to date with it again i'm going to look for the fuse board which is often under here i know it's not under here but it's either under here or it is here again fuse boards in most cases need changing the thing with electric is no matter how good you are at understanding what to do the final test comes with the electrician if they test it there could be fault so you can only get a good indication if it needs changing you won't know for certain so you definitely have to get the electrician out to go over that but with this here this is an old board these boards can be okay if they've got the trip switch on them if they're not in a path of exit or underneath a 
play. So we've done underneath the stairs and the path of it, I'm pretty sure it's path exit, but that probably is gonna need to be changed to a metal new series one because it's in your pathway of a fire escape exit. But they're not in them places. You can get away with these if they've got a trip switch. But some electricians pass them as just as, as a, a recommendation and some don't, it just depends on the electrician. But things you wanna look out for is this earth bonding, this yellow and green, the age of these wires to see if they're nice, new, modern wires. You've got the black and red wires and no earth bonding signs. That is usually a sign that the property is not up to date with electrics. Again, in the property, in just inside, most places will need at least two plugs per room. So look out for that. Look out for the height of the plug. So again, if these are too close to the floor, that's usually a sign or on the skirting board, it could need a rewire. Some if they're low down, we'll give it as a recommendation, but most will have that as a failure. And again, other places to look out for the earth bonding as well is in the kitchen underneath the sink bodice as well. So underneath here, if you've got no signs of earth bonding in there, it's probably gonna need to be addressed and oh, it might be not quite up to date underneath the sink and, and in the bathrooms as well. Let's take you upstairs. So that's pretty much downstairs. You can see again, look out for the radiators. You see the age of the radiators. Another little thing here is the size of this pipe work. I'm terrible with the size of the mill, but the thicker one, which this is, is much more of a better sign than if you've got the thinner one. The thinner ones can be problems and then you have to then account for the full pipe work being done. So even the thicker ones and the radiators are not that new, it's a better sign with things. Things you wanna look out for with radiators and boilers as well, look around for the house. What you wanna look on is the wall. If some house has got these old back boilers. So if you've got a timer on the side of the wall here, which we haven't, or sometimes in the kitchen, just behind where the chimney stack is, that could indicate you've got a back boiler. There's no sign of that there. Back boilers will cost more money to remove because, and for the reconfiguration of the pipe work, because the gas will be going into here and there'll be a boiler behind the other. Some can be decommissioned and bypassed. Some need to be pulled out completely, which is a much larger job. Obviously you gotta get it out from this fireplace somehow. So the difference with this, on the boilers, boilers on the higher end is gonna cost you anything from, like depends what trade you get, anything from around 15, on the lower end, 1500 quid to around two and a half K to get them fitted, like light for light boiler. And again, if it's a back boiler, you're looking more like two and a half, three and a half K. So it can be a difference. Again, we'll look up, up the stairs. Not very many of these houses will have these in. This will have to be removed. We'll put a new carpet down. The flooring is fine in here. And we'll look into the bathroom. This is a three bedroom house. So in places like this, I'm going to put a bath in because families want bath. I will always advise to put a bath in instead of a shower, even though it's in pretty decent condition. I'm going to look around for any signs of leaks and stuff like that. Again, I'm going to look for earth bonding, which it's not got a so sign of underneath here. So again, it tells me electrics do definitely need quite a bit of attention in here. So yeah, tiling and stuff like that in here probably will do. I'll take a, a stance on this. It's in a really desirable rental area. So what I'm going to do with this property is I'm going to start clearing it out. I'm going to put it on the market straight away as we're clearing it out. And I'm going to see if somebody wants to come in and put their own stamp on it because it's in such a high demand area with very little rental. So I'm going to toy with that. But tiling, you'd probably look, I'd probably look at, I'd need to get an extractor fan in there. Every bathroom, I want extractor fans in the bathroom. But in all fairness, it's pretty light refurb. When you're putting together your list for your builders, I'll just keep on ticking this off so I can get a list. And I say builders, this is not going to be for a builder. This is going to be particularly for a handyman. So in here, this is the boiler. So the boiler is definitely something you've got to look out for. With boilers, again, you want to look at the age, you want to look at the condition of that as well. Not in an ideal space. I might consider moving that. I know there's a cupboard that's here. I might consider moving that. If I didn't move that, what I would do is just put a wardrobe over the top of it. Great thing to do with these though is kitchen units. Get a thousand kitchen unit. It looks like a wardrobe. The Glada units, I mean, 600 wide and Glada units, and it'll just make it look like a cupboard over there. And it can be used you put some shelves here and shelves above it. Somebody can use it as a bit of a wardrobe in a small room like this. So that's probably the fix I would do, but in an ideal world, probably move it. But at the moment, this is more about speed than it is about getting this perfect. You make a judgment on these, on the locations and the desirability and everything with it. And again, in these rooms, we're gonna look, does it need painting, wallpaper, carpet? I'm just gonna tick these things off on my list as I go around. I'm gonna look for some obvious signs when I come into these around where the guttering goes for any damp signs in, in these sort of rooms. And again, I'm looking at the, the electrics, how old are the ceiling roses, how old are the socket, the light, socket. Bedrooms have to have at least two sockets in there. So I'm going to look around the signs of where if there's at least two sockets in there. Again, indicates this property definitely needs a bit on wiring. I'm not sure it's going to need a full rewire. The electrician will tell us for certain, but it's definitely going to need a lot of remedial work. The fuse board, 
installed. There's going to be a lot of bonding to do in here. We need the extractor fans sorting out. So there is a fair bit to do in, in this one. But again, carpets, just go through that tick list, tick off the bits you want, make that into a list for the builder. When you make these into lists for builders, it makes you more desirable customer to work with. So what I do is when I present this to a builder, I will give him a list of, like, this needs doors. So I'll give him a list of what style doors he needs to do. I'll give him a list of exactly, say if I want Howden's doors, magnet doors, I'll say exactly what they are, what doors are needed, exactly what materials are needed, short from screws and things like that. And ideally in a property, like I say short from screws, but short from screws, paint, mastic, I don't give them the list out, just the main stuff. If I want a new boiler, if I want a new kitchen, if I want new doors, I name the style ones I want and I get a list of specification and materials and then I get a list of the works that I want doing. And then as I said, it makes you a better, more desirable customer. Most builders at a cheaper price point haven't got time to quote or they haven't got the resources quote. Again, it allows you to go at a more reasonable price builder and still get better results with it. It takes a little bit of front end work where you put all this together and you go and find these bits. But ultimately, you get a better back end sort of result with these and more managed results. I've done other videos on refurbishments and stuff like that, so have a watch of these videos here. And if you're still here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that bell icon if you found that useful. It really helps the channel. Remember, my why to live my terms. My mission is to help as many people live on their terms as possible. So please share this out. And remember, if you don't evolve your ideas, you'll never live on your own terms. So evolve your ideas, live on your own terms, have an amazing day. Make sure you watch this video or on that side that YouTube suggesting that you're gonna like.